Uh, hello, and we are talking about continuous functions. These are going to be our video notes. So we started with discrete functions the other day, which were individual points. Uh, and today we're going to continue with another type of function, which is called a continuous function. Okay, uh, you can see I have a highlighter and I have three different colored pens that we're going to be using. So let's get started. So it says a continuous function. is a function whose line doesn't break. It's a line that doesn't have distinct points on the graph. Okay? The other statement about continuous functions is we can draw the line without lifting your pencil. Okay, now let's look down here at the bottom. We have three different, uh, three different images, or actually there are six different uh, continuous graphs, and I'll show you what I mean. It's a continuous function whose function whose line doesn't break. So meaning, if I start with my pen here, it's a pen instead of a pencil, I can draw all the way from the beginning to the end and not lift my pen. Your, yours would be a pencil in this case. Okay, here's another example. Start all the way on the left, continue, 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 and then we're done. On the discrete graphs, the one that had dots, you have to lift your pencil from one point to the next. Okay? So let's get, uh, let's get back to this and figure out how we write the domain and range, because we learned how to write the domain and range of discrete functions by just writing the individual points in increasing order, smallest to largest. That's kind of important here. And we know that the domain are our x values. And we know that the domain x values go left and right. That's our x axis. Okay? And this is how we're going to write the domain. You're going to have two inequalities. It's called a compound inequality. So you're going to have the left number. is going to be either less than or less than or equal to, I'm going to get to that in a moment, your letter X, which is either less than or equal to, and then the right number. I know that's not going to make a lot of sense to you right now, but after we do a few examples, I hope that it does. It should. For our range, the range are your Y values. And those are on your vertical axes or your y-axis. And then, uh, and then, so the way you're going to write the range is you're going to do, you're going to put a value there. Let's go less than or equal to on this one. A y instead of an x because we're dealing with the range. And then less than, and then here. And since we're dealing with this, since we're dealing with the range or your y's, instead of the left number, like it was with your domain, it's going to be the bottom. number. And instead of the right number, it's going to be your top number. And again, that probably won't make a lot of sense to you right now, but hopefully in a few moments it will. So the box method is how we're going to figure out what our left and right numbers are and what our bottom and top numbers are. It's called the box method because we're drawing a box, right? So it says it says place the smallest box around your graph or figure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to determine where the box intersects the x and I'll put it in a different color y axis. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started. We have three different uh, examples down here. I'm going to do the top three. I'm going to have you do the bottom three and let's see how we do. So the first one it says place the smallest box around the graph or figure. Well, I have to draw my box around the figure. Box is complete. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where the box intersects the x-axis. So it intersects the x-axis at negative 3 and at positive 3. Okay, and again, now we're going to go up here and we're going to say my left value, my left, well, let me just draw, you could always draw this in, less than or equal to, since it's a number, x, which is less than or equal to another number. And I'm going to put D for domain. And it says the left number. My left number is negative 3, and my right number is positive 3. And the reason why we do this is because the domain is every single value from negative 3. Remember, it's continuous, so we just draw that line. And it hits every single value from negative 3 to positive 3 on your axis. And that's why we draw it this way with this compound inequality. For our range, put an R here for my range, it's going to be your bottom number is less than or equal to my Y value, which is less than or equal to your top number. So let's look at our bottom number. Our bottom number is negative 3 here. And then we have a positive 4 up here where the highlighter intersects the y-axis. So our bottom number, negative 3, is small, less than or equal to every single y-value, which is less than or equal to 4. Because again, this line, if we're going in both directions, starts at a negative 3 and then continues all the way up to a positive 4. So it's going to hit every single y-value, no matter what the decimal or whatever. And that's what allows us to uh, quantify hitting every single value. Okay, let's, uh, let's move to the next one. So we're going to draw a box. Oop. Try and get my box here. All the way over. About there. All the way over. And then we'll come to you. Now, I want to say, ask a question of what's different between the first one and the second one? The, notice, the difference that I notice is right here. We have an arrow. And an arrow tells us that we are going on and on forever and ever. Does anybody know the sign that tells us going on and on forever and ever? If you don't, it's infinity or infinite. So as I am uh, going to determine where the box intersects the y and x axis, I need to account for this arrow. Okay, so let's get started with our left number. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4. And then as I look here, I'm going to the right. You would say it's probably positive 4, except the arrow tells us that it goes on and on forever and ever. So on this one, I'm going to say that it's infinity, positive infinity, because we're going to the right. So my domain is going to be my left number, which is negative 4, is less than or equal to my x value. And since we have positive infinity for my large number, you can never hit infinity. You can get really, really close, but you can never hit it. So I'm just going to put that it's less than positive infinity because you can never actually touch, never be equal to infinity. So you can't have less than or equal to. For our range, my R here. We have this sign again. So it's going down. So it's negative infinity because it's going down. Okay. And our top number would be up here where the box intersects at a positive four. So my range, the bottom number would be negative infinity which is less than, again, infinity, you cannot be equal to infinity, so it's just less than my y value, which is less than or equal to my top number, which is positive 4. Okay? So that is when you're going to use less than as opposed to less than or equal to. On the last one, I'm just going to draw the box, and I want you to do the th third example, and then I want you to do examples four and five and six for homework. There's our box. We have negative four, positive one. We have negative four and positive four. 
Good luck. See you tomorrow.